Hello everybody, in today's video I have an unboxing from Twisty Tex. Now I have to say that this is one of my most anticipated unboxings I've ever had in my entire life. Uh, this is a cuboid, it's a custom cuboid. It's a 3x5x7 bump cube. And I haven't played with a, a cuboid like this in a really long time. I stopped collecting them quite a while ago. Um, so... I'm, I'm, I've just been super happy um, knowing this is coming and hoping it's everything I think it's going to be, which I'm sure it will be. Okay, packaging. Oh, something from Twisty Tex. Uh, I'll pause that and let you guys read that if you would like. Uh, okay, everything is backwards here, so lift this. We got some lube. Lift this. And inside we have the puzzle itself. Oh wow, that's got some weight to it. Oh, that has some serious weight to it. So even though it is a very, very heavy puzzle, um, it is pretty much the weight that I figured it would be. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than I imagined it would be, but I, I, I really like the weight of this as well. Um, so yeah, it's a 3x5x7 bump cube, so that means it's an ultimate shapeshifter. And when I saw this on Super Antonio Vivaldi's channel, he had a black one with white stickers, um, I really wanted one. So I messaged Casey and I said, how can I get my hands on one of these? Can I please buy one off you? And he says it's more of a hobby uh, and that he'd love to see one on my channel. So he sent me one and built me one. So thank you very much, Casey. Um, wow. <laughs> So the thing I really like about this compared to the other ones that I've had, I've had a Shapeways version, I've had a Tripoom version of a 3x5x7, and they weren't perfectly cubic. They were pillowed, or if they were cubic, there was olsing going in, meaning some of the lines would curve and stuff. And I, uh, I much prefer the look of this. This, to me, is a really nice-looking puzzle. So I want to see how much this thing is bumped and how the turning is. Wow, this turning is amazing. I know that with FDM printing, how he printed the extensions onto this, uh, you know, they can be rough. So a lot of the time, I believe, building this was uh, sanding the pieces. We'll take a look at that in a second. I just want to continue a checkerboard here. Just got to make sure everything is lined up. Once everything's lined up, though, like it just turns so nicely. All right, so this is a checkerboard pattern. Wow, does that ever look cool in the checkerboard pattern? It looks like on each side of the puzzle, uh, the, the extensions come out about the same as the other sides. And by that, I mean like, you know, obviously these ones are longer than the, these ones here, uh, but the extensions from opposites are about the same length from the short one to the tall one as they are from the short one to tall one on here and the short ones and tall ones on here. So that is a very good bumped out puzzle. So in case you didn't pause to read this card here, it does say that the original puzzle is a Sheng Shao 7x7, which is one of the more known modded puzzles like for, for modding. This, it was not cut down at all, is basically glued as a 3x5x7, I believe. And then these uh, extensions were printed and then glued onto that to uh, extend it all out to make it uh, a nice cubic shape. And uh, I, I, the work that must have gone into building this and sanding all the pieces, but I bet, I bet if you turn it, you can sort of see some of the uh, original puzzle sticking out and probably, yeah, right here too, in uh, different, different spots, you can see some of the original puzzle where the rest has been glued onto it. Now, I, I always thought when I was looking at Casey's work on Facebook that it, it was he was like the tripoom of extensions but with 3d printing like the quality the look of his puzzles are amazing like right away I associated it with uh, tripoom quality um, but even though tripoom will fill all these extensions fill all this and make it look like one piece um, it doesn't bother me to see that at all I do not think that it's lazy work in, in any way whatsoever either um, as long as it turns fine, that's great. As long as it's black on black and not like black on a white puzzle because that would stand out, uh, then then I would kind of maybe <laughs> not like it so much. But um, yeah, it's perfect. Oh, here's a good one. Look at this one. 
that one right there. <laughs> so you can see that everything from here over and up is extended. Anyway, so that's a little bit about the process of this. And here you can see uh, Casey's sticker as well. Kind of sticks out like a sore thumb, to be completely honest. Doesn't bother me at all. Um, a clear one would be cool, or even if it was cut out or something like that. But this is perfectly fine. Totally fine. So again, the turning quality on this thing is is absolutely amazing. There's, It's quiet. It turns fine. There's no, no catching. Like... The build quality is phenomenal. Casey, you do an amazing job at your mods. So looking closer at this thing, you can't see it here, so I'm gonna take some macro shots. But looking closer at this on the stickers right here, uh, you can see the printing marks underneath the stickers just around the edge. Like you really, I had to really look close up with my eyes to see that though. It's barely there. But when you're looking at it from a distance like this, uh, you don't even see that like it's it's so well done <laughs> Wow and just wow this I bet you it can cut corner it can it can cut corners even not that I want to it's not a speed cube all right everybody so I think it is time for me to scramble this thing so I am going to just do some 180 degree turns first this uh, ultimate shape shifting cuboid it can be a bit of a challenge to scramble it correctly. So if you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna have a very easy solve on your hands. And that is not what you want. You wanna be challenged by these type of puzzles. That's why you get them. That's why you solve them. Um, so I'm gonna say that that's a pretty, pretty decent scramble for this. So the next uh, phase of the scramble is I want to exchange some of these pieces for these pieces. Uh, and it's incredibly easy to do that. You just turn this layer like this and you turn it over and then you put it back. And now you've got one and two. I'd like to have three. I'd like to have three. So let's, uh, let's do this like that. Does that give me three? That gives me three. One here and one here and one there. Um, so from here now, I am going to uh, turn up some of these so basically it's the same thing you go like this and then you turn it over you can go like this and we're scrambling those I think that's actually actually I don't want to do it that easy let's see if I can there one two three maybe I shouldn't have that many one, two, three, four, because the more I put up, the more it restricts me from um, swapping these pieces with these pieces. Uh, it bandages up, so I think I'm gonna have four just like that. Let's put them all here. And now we're gonna turn it like this and we're gonna start swapping some of these three pieces here, the three center ones, with these type of pieces, because these are longer and they're gonna add uh, an extra uh, piece you'll see so we go like this and let's do the center and we can turn it back so now you can see like we've added one piece here into the middle of this and same with here and they're in the center um, so I'd like to do it again here and then continue doing it Okay, so we're getting somewhere with it. All right, so now we've successfully scrambled a lot of these pieces with the other ones, and now uh, what we should do is start flipping these layers upwards. So it's just like doing these layers here. I'm gonna make sure that these layers are side by side Actually, I could probably, no, I don't want to do that yet. Okay, so let's do this. Do that. Well, see, this is where it's gonna start getting hard to, to move things. Actually, I only want to do one of them. So let's do this because I want, I want an odd layer number. Even layer is easy to, to solve. So let's go like this. 
I think that's pretty good. Let's turn it sideways. Um, let's swap. I want to turn some up here as well because that'll create some difficulty later. So I want to swap these two so this one comes here. Then I can flip it up. So two are you, two are you, Brian, two are you, Brian, D, two are you, Brian, two are you, two are. So now that that one's done, we can turn this and flip some of those up. And I think from here we can just go into a 3x3 three three scramble, which is going to make it very bandaged and difficult to solve. Boom. Ah, oh, these aren't separated out enough. That's okay. There's, I think, enough to deal with here as it sits. Okay, so I'm going to say that this is a scrambled bump 3 by 5 by 7 And so now it only, it's bandaged into a 3 by 3 So this entire face, all of this, is one layer. This is the middle layer, and this one is the bottom layer. This is all bandaged together. And it's my job to figure out how to unbandage it, how to release everything, so I can put it in... Uh, into a cubic form again so well cubish form <laughs> all right guys I'm gonna go and solve this and uh, I'll be back all right everybody so I have solved this a couple of times now and I am extremely impressed with it in fact I haven't been this excited this has to be my favorite puzzle I've ever gotten in my entire life um, everything about this is challenging. Everything about this is built well. I'm kind of in shock of how good this thing is and how fun it is to solve. I mean, I knew it would be fun and I knew it would be good, but I didn't know it would be this good. It really like brings me back to solving these incredibly difficult puzzles again. And it's really like re-inspired, um, you know, my, my passion for for these type of puzzles because I've really just been doing speed solving lately but I kind of got bored honestly and the reason I haven't uploaded a lot of things like this is because I got bored nothing was challenging for me anymore everything was too easy and and I was spending you know all this money thousands of dollars on these custom puzzles that were just too easy and, and not even challenging in any way anymore and that's why I stopped and this one here maybe because it's been so long it was, it was really challenging for me to solve this. It took me uh, about a day on and off to solve it the first time. The second and third time, it, it didn't take all that long. Uh, maybe an hour, <laughs> something like that. Now that I had my, uh, my practice in. But uh, honestly, Casey, thank you for sending me this. Um, it, it, really, it really made me remember why I love puzzles. And, and not just speed solving, but like just puzzles. Um, it just made me think about how to solve a puzzle again. And uh, and that was really nostalgic. It was really awesome. So um, I can't wait to get that next package you're sending me. And I already know what that is. <laughs> Some people may have seen it on another channel. Anyways, guys, uh, thank you for watching. Thanks, Casey, for sending me this. I can't wait to get the next puzzle. Um, I think it'll be challenging as well. Well, I hope so. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you on my next video.